Marian Moore was a modernist poet, critic, essayist, translator and editor. She was one of the eminent literary figures of the modernist period and highly praised by poets like Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot. She was actively influenced and practiced the imagist principles in her poetry. One can see that her poetry is characterized by linguistic precision, acute observation and detailed description along with a blend of emotion and meditative analysis. She frequently uses animals as a central image. Poetry, the title of a poem, Poetry, is one of Moore's best known poems. It is a poem that she has continually revised and re-revised. And in fact, this version of the poem that we are discussing today was revised and re-revised into just the first three lines when she published it in an anthology called The Complete Poems, published in 1967. So this poem takes a lot of thought and effort and sweat by Marianne Moore and discusses about how poetry is appreciated and welcome as well as how poetry is hated and despised by people. And to bring this point into consideration, she lists out several reasons for a person to hate poetry. And in listing out these several reasons to hate poetry, in the end of the poem, she brings the defense of poetry, why a person should feel interested in genuine poetry. So, in short, this poem can be discussed to be a poem that discusses the comparison and contrast between half poetry or bad poetry and genuine poetry. Let's dive into the poem. Poetry by Marianne Moore. As the poem begins, we can see that the poet makes an announcement. I do dislike it. So, the poet makes an announcement, declares that even she does not like it. She does not like poetry. Because there are more important things beyond all the fiddle titled poetry. Now she says that while you read poetry with a perfect hatred for it, one can understand that after all there is a place for the genuine poetry. What is missing in the poem that you are reading, you will find that there is still place for genuine poetry. Now, what are the things that she lists out which is more genuine than the poem that you are currently reading, which you might read with great hatred? She lists out these following things. Hands that can grasp, eyes that can dilate, hair that can rise, all these things are important not just because a high sounding interpretation can be given to them but because simply because that they are useful in practical life a hand that can clutch eyes that can dilate and hair all these things are useful to you and this is why you feel like you are interested in them not just because these things afford high sounding interpretations again she mentions some more things 
the upside down bat the elephants the wild horse is taking a roll or a tireless wolf looking for prey under the tree or the immovable critic who twinkles his skin like a horse that feels a flea an insect or the baseball fan or the statistician all these cases and lists should be cited which can be considered as more important in our life than poetry and the poet says that it is not valid to discriminate against business documents and school books because all these phenomena are important all these things are practically applicable in life and they should be considered more important than poetry so in mentioning or bringing together certain things from certain fragments from here and there the poet says that all these things find significance in day to day life you see the casual sight of a bat lying upside down or you see the sight of elephants pushing in their herds or a wild horse racing there or the sight of a wolf that is interested in catching prey or there are critics who are so immovable like horses that just do not twitch when bugged by an insect and then there may be a baseball fan then there may be a statistician a trader all these fragments from life are all important to you than poetry and it is okay the poet says that all these things can be considered as important in your life than poetry because they are important to you not because of high sounding interpretations the business documents the school books are all important however the poet clearly says that one must make a distinction that when half poets are prominent or the poetry written by half poets is what is in your hands the result is not poetry as well as the result is not the audience being literalists of imagination so the poet says that half poetry or the people who claim among ourselves as autocrats or as literalists of the imagination should not be considered important then what is important in the case of poetry with regards to poetry what is significant wherever a poem is presenting imaginary gardens with real toads in them and have that imaginary garden with real toads inside your head so full of life that poetry we shall have it okay so those poetry which is able to provoke imaginary things as real as life inside your head so long as poetry is not able to do that they are half poetry or bad poetry or dead poetry just when a poet is able to create such lively and vibrant pictures inside the reader's head that is poetry that is genuine good poetry or genuine poetry finds its raw material in the rawness that is in life so put together we can see that this poem makes a comparison between the reasons for hating poetry and for being interested in poetry the poet admits that even she dislikes that poetry which is written by half poets which is to be hated which is worthy of being hated or which is worthy of being pushed aside among the paraphernalia of day to day life while the real poetry that she finds interested in 
and she knows that everybody will find interested in is the rawness of raw poetry that is able to stimulate and spark imagination in the readers minds